of the day. This is Miss Tabasso. As you know that we are reading The Land Lady by Roald Dahl. Let's see the story so far. Billy Weaver reached bar at about 9 o'clock in the evening. On asking, the porter suggested him to go to the Bell and Dragon. Billy started moving towards Bell and Dragon. While walking through the street, suddenly his eyes caught sight of a printed notice in it were written bed and breakfast. Billy peeped through the window of it and saw that it was well furnished and also had a bright fire burning in the fireplace. Billy thought that it would be a very comfortable place for him to stay for the night. But before finally making up his mind, Billy thought that he would have a look at the bell and dragon. As he turned to go to the bell and dragon, he felt as if the words bed and breakfast were compelling him and forcing him to stay over there. Without his own will, Billy started to move towards the front door. He went near the front door and rang the doorbell. As soon as he rang the doorbell, instantly a lady about 45 to 50 years old with a round pink face and calm blue eyes opened the door and welcomed him. After that, Billy stepped over the entrance door and he found the lady to be extremely amicable and charming. Billy took off his hat and when he was about to hang his hat, he found that there were no other hats or coats or walking sticks over there. It means that she was the only visitor over there. The landlady said Billy that she knew Billy would come. She also remarked that she was extremely happy that Billy came over there. After that, they climbed to the third floor of the building and the landlady showed Billy his room. Now, let's see the farther story. Here it goes, The Landlady by Roald Dahl. I am so glad you appeared, she said, looking earnestly into his face. I was beginning to get worried. Looking with seriousness, the landlady said that she was extremely happy that Billy visited her. She also added that she was getting worried as no visitors were coming. What about supper, my dear? I am not a bit hungry. Thank you, he said. I think I will just go to bed. The landlady asked Billy if he would like to have meal before going to bed. Billy answered that she was not at all hungry and would just go to sleep. Very well then, I will leave you now. But before you go to bed, would you be kind enough to pop into the sitting room and sign the book? The landlady said Billy that she would take his leave then. She also asked Billy if he would go downstairs and sign the visitor's book before going to bed. The fact that his landlady appeared to be slightly off her rocker didn't worry Billy. The landlady seemed to be a bit crazy and strange but this strangeness and queerness didn't worry Billy. After unpacking his suitcase he trotted downstairs to the living room. He found the guest book lying open on the piano and the little dachshund still sleeping soundly. He took out his pen and wrote down his name and 
and address. There were only two other entries above his on the page. And as one always does with guest books, he started to read them. One was a Christopher Mulholland and the other was Gregory W. Temple. So, after unpacking his suitcase, Billy went downstairs to the living room. There he found the guest book on the piano and the little dog was still sleeping soundly. He took out his pen and then wrote his own name and address in the guest book. There were only two other entries above his on that particular page. He saw that one was the name of some Christopher Mulholland and the other was Gregory W. Temple. Christopher Mulholland, that rings a bell. Where had he heard that rather unusual name before? He glanced down again at the book. Christopher Mulholland, 231 Cathedral Road, Cardiff, Gregory W. Temple, 27 Sycamo Drive, Bristol. After reading the name of Christopher Mulholland, Billy felt that the name was very familiar to him. So, he looked at that particular page of the guest book again to read out the name and address. He saw that there were only two entries. One was of Christopher Mulholland, whose address was 231 Cathedral Road, Cardiff, and the other one was of Gregory W. Temple, whose address was 27 Sycamore Drive, Bristol. Gregory Temple, he said aloud, searching his memory, Christopher Mulholland. So, Billy tried to recall the names of these two persons in his mind by saying their names aloud. Such charming boys, a voice behind him answered. He turned and saw the landlady sailing into the room with a large silver tray in her hands. As Billy was continuously trying to think about the names Gregory Temple and Christopher Mulholland, he started saying them aloud so that he could recall them in his mind. While he was doing this, he heard a voice behind him, which said that the boys were very charming. He turned back and saw that the landlady was confidently moving into the room with a large silver tray in her hands. They sound somehow familiar, he said. I am almost positive I have heard those names before somewhere. Maybe it was in the newspapers. When the landlady said that those two boys were very charming, Billy said that he was almost confirmed that he had heard about those names somewhere earlier as those two names sounds very familiar to him. It might be that he had read about them in some newspapers. They weren't famous in any way, were they? I mean famous cricketers or footballers. Billy asks the landlady if those two names belong to any renowned cricketers or footballers. Famous, she said, setting the tea tray down. Oh no, I don't think so, but they were incredibly handsome, exactly like you. Setting the tea tray down, which the landlady brought for Billy, she said that she didn't think that those boys were famous or popular, but they were unbelievably handsome and she compared them with Billy. Once more, Billy glanced down at the book. This last entry 
is over two years old and Christopher Mulholland's is nearly three years ago. Things get scarier still when he finds out that the two men's names were entered into the guest book two and three years ago respectively. Roald Dahl is carefully building up tension here. Dear me, she said, heaving a dainty little shy, how time does fly away, doesn't it? Heaving a shy, the landlady said that time flies away very quickly. Here goes word meanings. First, earnestly, with sincerity and seriousness. Second, supper, the meal eaten just before going to bed. Third, off her rocker, it is an informal phrase for mad, crazy or insane. Fourth, trotted, walked first, taking short steps. Fifth, rings a bell, means sounds vaguely familiar. Sixth, incredibly, means unbelievably. Seventh, heaving, making a slow sound. Eighth, dainty, careful in a way, suggesting good manners. Now, here we have make sentences. First, briskly, meaning quickly. We walked briskly along the lane and through Park Street to the MG Road. Second, peculiar, meaning strange or queer. Her behavior was a peculiar mixture of the sophisticated and the childlike. Third, tantalizing means tempting. The tantalizing plot details make me want to read the book. Fourth, admiration means a feeling of respect and liking for somebody or something. I have great admiration for her courage. Fifth, dainty means to be careful in a way suggesting good manners. Despite their dainty appearance, most of the beetles are carnivorous. That's all for the day. We'll be continuing the remaining part of the story in the next lecture. Do like and subscribe. Thank you.